They were high school sweethearts. When they were just 18 years old, they married in 1999 and began raising a family. Together, they had three children and were living in a beautiful home in Chula Vista, California. But after more than 20 years together, they began to have marital trouble. Maya was not happy and was getting ready to leave Larry. But before she could file any paperwork, Maya disappeared on January 7, 2021. She left no note and no clues. This raised a lot of suspicion. Why would a mother of three young children just leave? Maya's husband became the focus of investigators, and after 21 months, he was charged with Maya's murder, even though her body has never been found. Tonight, the latest in the case against Larry Miliette and the search for Maya. Plus, we'll look at the bizarre allegation that Larry hired someone to cast a spell on Maya so she wouldn't leave him. I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a story that we've been covering for quite some time. It all began back on January 7th of 2021. We're in the newsroom, and all of a sudden, we, we, we get wind of a, of a story out of California. A young mom is missing. And, you know, we cover a lot of stories like this. And, you know, once you first hear about it, you got to find out all right, what's going on, what's the story, what's going on in her life, who is she, do they have children, how old are the children, what exactly are some of the circumstances surrounding all of this. And most importantly, we always ask, how about the husband? You know, what is the husband saying? And in this case, we heard that the husband was speaking, which, okay, well, maybe we can book him as a guest on the show. Well, what we found out was that our great affiliate out in San Diego, California, already spoke with him. Larry Miliete is his name. And there was a recorded interview with him, and we listened to it. It was just audio only over the phone, and I'm listening to his voice and kind of the way he's talking, and I'm like, this sounds familiar. This guy sounded like Scott Peterson. And that's all that ran through my mind the first time I heard him. It's like, this guy sounds like Scott Peterson. I remember hearing all those interviews while Lacey was missing, those phone calls that he made. Um, it, it, was, it was stunning to me. And I guess I became a little jaded at that moment because of how he sounded. But I still have to keep an open mind about, okay, this is a husband who, you know, is asking for help in finding his wife. Then we found out more about Larry and, and Maya. May, her family calls her May, um, about their relationship. And it became very clear that despite the fact that they were high school sweethearts, were building this incredible life together, amazing family, amazing extended family, um, she wanted out. She wanted out of that relationship. That's a huge red flag. You know, I know. You've got someone who's missing who wants out of a relationship, what, what exactly is going on here? And as the investigation continued, month after month, the searches continued, uh, we noticed that Larry lawyered up. Larry wasn't taking part in the searches for his missing wife. And then he's separating his kids from the rest of Maya's family. A lot of red flags all over the place on this case. And then finally, he was arrested and charged with the murder of Maya, although she was never found. And then we learned even more about what was going on and this really bizarre, bizarre fact was revealed by the district attorney, alleging that Larry had hired spellcasters to cast a spell on Maya before she went missing to somehow in incapacitate her so she couldn't physically leave him. Like I said, she wanted out of the relationship. And I guess Larry knew this, at least according to investigators, and wanted to do everything in his power and use spellcaster powers to physically incapacitate his wife 
so she would be unable to leave him. Unbelievable. Here's more in the story of, of the disappearance of Maya May Malete. Larry was trying to hold on to May, and he resorted to uh, contacting what are called spellcasters. A really bizarre twist in the case of missing mom Maya Miliette, also known as May. Her husband Larry was allegedly trying to cast a spell on her. He was asking for May to become incap incapacitated for me to be in an accident, to have broken bones so that she could stay at home. The DA says Larry sent daily messages to his spellcaster, trying to bring harm to his wife and the man he suspected she was seeing. All this revealed on the day prosecutors charged Larry with Maya's murder and outlined what they say happened in the early morning hours of January 8th, 2021. Security video brought by, retained by Chula Vista PD showed the defendant on January 8th at 5.58 a.m. in the morning moving his Lexus GX460, a black Lexus. The Lexus was already backed into the driveway, but Larry Miliette repositioned that Lexus where the back of the Lexus is in, in the entrance of that garage. He repositioned it where no video camera can capture whether a body was put in the back of the Lexus or not. After repositioning the car at 5.58 a.m., Larry leaves and he does not return to the house for 11 hours and 21 minutes. The story of Larry and Maya Miliette goes back many years. They were high school sweethearts. They got married and were raising a family in a wonderful neighborhood in Chula Vista, California. But before her disappearance, their relationship was beginning to fall apart, something Larry admits. We got into a, a, a kind of an argument. Um, and, and, you know, we've been having, uh, you know, like problems. Um, you know, for about a year. And just before she disappeared, Maya had called an attorney about a divorce. Mary Chris Drulier is Maya's sister, and she revealed this fact on Court TV. My sister was ready to leave um, the relationship. The relationship has been struggling, and I think um, she was ready to, to, to move on and um, hope before to start a new life. Um, yeah, she was, um, she did file for divorce, you know, the day um, she was last seen. While Larry has been charged with Maya's murder, she has never been found. She disappeared on January 7th, 2021. And when she first went missing, Larry spoke publicly, telling his version of what happened. On Saturday morning, uh, when her parents came, came by, uh, her door was locked. Uh, I found the keys to the bedroom, and I opened it, and she was already gone. So it kind of maybe she went to a morning sunrise hike. After that, you know, like at night, we're like, okay, she hasn't come home yet. You know, the latest she would be home like 2:30 or you know 3:30 in the morning. After that, it's kind of like out of the you know ordinary. But parts of his story never made sense to Maya's family. What also never made sense to them was the fact that Larry never joined the family in the countless searches for his wife. We have a whole community, the community of the children. The people around the world know the story. You cannot hide. This whole story is going to follow you. The kids are going to ask you questions one day when they grow up and start thinking for themselves. Sorry. Were you out there looking for mommy when she went disappearing? Where were you at, Dad? So, as Larry Miliette waits for his next court date, the question is, Will investigators find Maya's body before a jury hears the case? And joining me now in San Diego, California, is a reporter with our great affiliate KGTV News 10, Laura Acevedo, is with us. Laura, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, what, give us 
Bring us up to date. Hey, what's going on with Larry Miliette now? What are the charges that he's facing and what's the status of his case? Well, he is facing a murder charge, but right now all criminal proceedings are on hold. This is because he did have a court date last June where the prosecution was really supposed to lay out the evidence that they have against him and the reason that they feel that murder charge should hold and why she, he should go to trial. But during that court date last June, his attorney, Bonita Martinez, said that her client was actually mentally incompetent. And so that suspends all criminal proceedings for the time being while Larry Miliete is evaluated for mental competency to determine whether or not he is competent to stand trial. So that date has been set for late August. And but for now, he will be uh, evaluated for mental competency. And if he is competent, he will then stand trial. But for now, everything is on hold while they determine whether or not he is competent for trial. Okay, and, and you know, when you start talking about hiring spellcasters and everything else, uh, I could see how that could potentially be an issue here. Um, how about the searches for May? Um, are they continuing? Any update, any, any uh, new leads in being able to track down what happened to Maya Milite? Well, no new leads that we are aware of. The Chula Vista Police Department, you know, really stays tight-lipped about this, and they did until they announced his arrest in August of last year. Those searches continue. They used to be weekly. Um, now sometimes the family takes days off. They give those search warriors, that's what they're called, the day off. We do know that they still hold a weekly prayer vigil. This is a virtual Zoom prayer that happens every single Thursday. Um, and they pray for any information about where May's body may be. They also pray um, for Larry to be held accountable. We know that her sister, Mary Chris, joins these Zoom prayers every single Thursday. I have actually joined them myself and sat in on them. And you hear people from all over the country praying for her, praying for answers in this case, um, and ultimately praying for Larry to be held accountable. Many of these search warriors believe that he is the person responsible and they agree with the murder charge and they are looking forward to this court date and this trial if it does happen. Um, a lot of them have shown up to his court appearances. Usually there's a crowd outside waiting for a seat in that courtroom, but again, for now, They'll have to wait until uh, the court determines whether or not he's competent for that trial. Laura Acevedo, KGTV 10 News out in San Diego. Appreciate your valuable time tonight. And uh, we'll check back with you when there are more developments as we get closer to that date at the end of August. Appreciate it. Want to bring in Thank now you. in New York City, psychotherapist, host of Talking Live on Facebook Watch and the Bite Side podcast, Dr. Robbie Ludwig is uh, back with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Robbie, great to see you. I want to play for you. Um, something that the San Diego District Attorney said about Larry Miliette and, and what was going on in his life and Maya's life. Let's take a listen. Larry was trying to hold on to May and he resorted to uh, contacting what are called spellcasters. I've never had a case where that was involved. These spellcasters would be asked to make May want to stay in the relationship. But as December of 2020 came, those messages to spellcasters were a lot more threatening. He was asking for May to become incap incapacitated, for May to be in an accident, to have broken bones so that she could stay at home, thus displaying his homicidal ideations to harm May. Okay, Dr. Rob, I want you to start with that, what we just heard from the DA. If in fact that is true, what does it tell you about what's going on in this marriage and in the in the mind of Larry Miliete? So it appears that Larry is very traditional in some ways because we know that using witches or these spells is not something that people in current or modern society, at least from the Philippines, are still using. It also showed his desperation and how out of control Larry felt in terms of being able to keep his wife with him.
And clearly he was desperate not to be abandoned and felt like he could do anything on his own. Um, I don't know if they tried counseling. I don't know if psychotherapy was something that they looked into. So kind of these magical ideas. And as he realized that it was not working, his wife still wanted to leave him, uh, his ideation and his anger became more threatening and more dangerous. So... I was fascinated because I've, like the DA, I've never heard of a case where a murder defendant was accused of casting spells on the victim prior to the murder. So we spoke with a, um, a spellcaster uh, from MagicalSpot.com. Tina Caro is her name. We asked her some questions in general about spell casting and people who, who um, are interested in having spells cast. First question we asked was, what type of spells are most commonly asked for? And, and she told us the most common spells requested are love spells, of which there are many kinds. Most commonly among those would be spells intended to repair a damaged relationship, such as bringing an ex back into your life. And to me, that, that kind of makes sense. You put a love spell on someone, yet here, yeah. Larry, I don't think he was trying to go for a love spell. Well, probably initially he was, right? The goal was to have his wife love him, not want to leave him, not want to leave the house. And it sounds like slowly he became hopeless. And as he became hopeless, that's when the anger and the rage and the punitive actions in whatever means he had access to started to take place. We also don't know how he was towards May within the relationship, whether there was abuse. But we do know that when a woman wants to leave, that is when she's most vulnerable. It's also probably the time that Larry realized these spells were not working and he was not going to get what he wanted. May was not going to stay with him. Uh, another question that we asked uh, uh, Tina Caro, um, professional spellcaster, was how common is it for spouses to ask for spells casting harm onto their spouses. And she replied, any genuine and reputable spellcaster such as myself will not cast spells that could cause harm to anyone. I do receive requests for this purpose upon occasion, but it's quite rare. And I always refuse to cast any such spell and immediately block the person from contacting me. There are spellcasters out there who will take on any request from a client, no matter how sinister. And these are the spellcasters that are usually inexperienced because seasoned practitioners know the very real dangers of casting spells that have harmful intentions. Um, to me, it really speaks volumes, though, that uh, about the desperation you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, I want her incapacitated. I, I love her so much, I want her to be crippled so she literally cannot physically ever leave me. Yes. Uh, whatever it takes, Biggie, for some men. So, it, it you know, and when we see May, she's a very beautiful woman. There were videos of her singing. She clearly had a lot of talent. So Larry was probably very threatened by his wife's beauty, by her talent, uh, and maybe just growing out of the relationship and really wanting something else, which makes sense. But unfortunately, Larry did not have the ability to recognize May had a right to leave him. You know, in a relationship, we make a choice every day. And it sounds like whatever it took, if it took her being crippled, then um, he would welcome that. It just sounds like he was really desperate, dependent, and very afraid to be without her. All right, Dr. Robbie's going to stay with us. We're going to also bring in our investigators, take a look at some of the evidence in the case, um, the search for uh, May Miliette as well, plus coming up next hour. In Fairfax County, Virginia, new allegations in Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Amber's attorneys now claiming Juror 15 was never sent a jury notice and should not have been on that jury. Could this overturn the verdict? Plus, new details about who actually paid for Amber's attorneys. Thank you. So I'll just... Okay, I'll yeah. just stop talking. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want to be respectful of the court's problem, time and the, and the jury's time. Licensed everything.
The report generated from the download indicates a navigation event on January 8th at 3.29 p.m. in the afternoon for Larry's home address, 2413 Paseo Los Gatos. So two and a half hours before returning to the home, he is entering his home address to get to the home. And this is why I am giving this information so the public understands that we do not have a vicinity where the body may be. The, it may be out two and a half hours or even further or closer. And that's why we need the public's help. There's Larry Miliette. His wife still has not been found, but he's been charged with her murder. You heard the DA there say that there was GPS evidence that puts him on the day she goes missing or two and a half hours away trying to find his way back home using the GPS. So this is like a, like a needle in a haystack at this point, trying to figure out where he was, where he went. Let me go through the timeline so you have some idea of, of what happened here. We've got uh, January 7th, 2021, 12.15 p.m., May makes an appointment with a divorce attorney. Huge, right? Huge deal. Uh, 8.15, she sends her last known communication to her family via Facebook Messenger. They had a big party coming up that weekend for one of her children, a birthday party. May would never miss that. Then on January 8th, 5.58 a.m., Larry is actually seen on surveillance video repositioning his Lexus in the driveway, kind of backing it into the garage a little bit. 6.45 a.m., Larry leaves the house for 11 hours, takes his four-year-old child with him, but leaves the older children, who aren't old enough, really, to be home alone that long. They may be very responsible kids, but they're, you know, not old enough, really, to be left alone for 11 hours. Um, then, at 3.39, he enters his home address into his vehicle navigation system and then returns home at 6.06. .06. That's a long trip, takes his four-year-old with him, but leaves the other children at home. I want you to take a listen, um, again, to the DA talking about Larry Miliette repositioning that Lexus. Key factor, I believe, here. Let's listen. Security video brought by, retained by Chula Vista PD, showed the defendant on January 8th at 5.58 a.m. in the morning, moving his Lexus GX460, a black Lexus, with the license plate that bears the name Melani. The Lexus was already backed into the driveway, but Larry Miliette repositioned that Lexus where the back of the Lexus is in, in the entrance of that garage. He repositioned it where no video camera can capture whether a body was put in the back of the Lexus or not. Still with me, psychotherapist Dr. Robbie Ludwig. Joining us now, our investigators in Los Angeles, California, retired FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon, and in Salt Lake City, Utah, private investigator Jason Jensen. Great to see you guys tonight. Um, Bobby, let me start with you. This is a circumstantial case right now, as I'm looking at this evidence. Obviously, they haven't even found May yet. Um, but it reminds me a lot of Scott Peterson, right? Your wife goes missing, and you take this crazy trip. Scott Peterson, it was two hours away to go fishing in his little dinghy in San Francisco Bay. And then uh, Larry Miliette is talking about going to the beach with his four-year-old at 6 o'clock in the morning, leaving the kids home. Makes no sense. Not only that, he, he claims to have been at Solana Beach, which is a very popular beach just to the south of where they lived in Southern California. Everybody knows that area. There are two major causeways in north and south that run the Pacific Coast Highway and the I-5 Interstate. Um, two and a half hours before he returns home, he puts his home address into his navigation, which tells me he's somewhere that he doesn't know how to get back home from. Okay, if he's at Solana Beach, he knows how to get home from Solana Beach. If he's spending the whole day at a beach, by the way, he's been to before with his family, he knows how to get home. He's not putting his home address into his navigation system. So that that's a red flag for me right there. That that he had to find his way home. He's some now the audience should know that that's not doesn't mean he was 
driving two and a half hours. It just means two and a half hours after he put it in is when he arrived home. But it tells me that he was somewhere where he didn't know how to get back home. And certainly when his alibi that he was at Solana Beach tells me he would have known how to get home from there. Uh, Jason Jensen, finding Maya Milete at this point still seems to be a needle in the haystack. We need someone that saw that Lexus somewhere on that day, on, on January 8th, 2021. And, and to me, that's the, the key because, as, as Bobby said, he, is, he doesn't know his way back home. So where the heck could he be? He could be almost anywhere. You're right, Vinny. I mean, obviously, if somebody recognizes that Lexus and can pinpoint where it was last seen, that will be tremendously helpful because, uh, you know, anywhere from Southern California, from Chula Vista all the way east to uh, to uh, the, you know, Arizona border, we're talking the, the desert, which is an easy place to conceal a body, which would be impossible to find. Uh, Bobby, your, your thoughts, if this murder took place in the home, and it took 21 months to get to the point where they arrested him for murder. How much evidence do you think there is potentially in the home? Well, that's a good question. Now, what your timeline earlier left out was that the night of the 7th, a neighbor's video surveillance uh, system picked up what sounds like six, seven, eight shots. And the FBI did analyze that audio and it wasn't of high enough quality for them to say definitively that they're, they're gunshots. But I've heard that audio. And as somebody who's carried a gun his whole life, it sounds like gunshots to me. In that neighborhood at that hour, I don't know what else it could have been. Um, it did not sound like a car backfiring. A car doesn't backfire seven or eight times in a row. In addition, at the time that that audio was recorded, those bang, bang, bangs are recorded, a neighbor hears the Malete children playing in their backyard at somewhat at 10 o'clock at night. So if he's going to kill his wife this way, he's going to get the kids out of the house. He puts them in the backyard, and then you hear the shots, which presumably came from this bedroom that he had locked off. The brother showed up. He wouldn't let him in the bedroom, you know, and, and, and so that bedroom is crucial. What they found in that bedroom, if, you know, if he hadn't had a chance to clean too much of it up, is going to be crucial because I think, in my opinion, that sounds like where the crime took place. Yeah, Jason Jensen, your thoughts about the, the type of evidence it's going to take here to convict Larry Miliette without finding Maya? Well, clearly at this point, it's a no-body homicide, so hopefully, like Bobby pointed out, if there is a, you know, a violent a gunshot uh, murder in the bedroom, we're hoping that there's going to be forensics, you know, blood pattern, blood stains throughout the room that can evidence that there was a high velocity, you know, shooting where there was impact spatter everywhere. So hopefully they can make their case without a body because that tends to be the trend these days because criminals think they're pretty smart. Uh, the more they know about uh Corpus delicti, they think they can get away with a murder without a body, but that's no longer the case, and it becomes more and more likely that that'll l happen less and less. All right, Jason Jensen, private investigator, Bobby Chacon, retired FBI special agent, and also like an expert in California. He knows the beaches. He knows everything you need to know out there. Uh, appreciate your time tonight. Dr. Robbie Love is going to stay with us because when we come back, we're going to listen to more of Larry Miliette's statements. We'll bring in Janine Driver, Dr. Robbie Ludwig. We'll hear what Larry has to say. Does it make sense? What is his voice telling us that his words are not? to state those lies and to make us look like the bad guy? No, Larry, you're the bad guy, okay? You're, we, we are trying to reach out to you and we, we need your help. If you know what happened to your wife, come forward, be a man. It's been six months, you know? And, and I'm sorry, but a loving husband doesn't act the way you act. And if, you, if you're completely honest and you, you have nothing to hide, come forward and help us, help us find your wife. If, did, if she really, you know, get up and walked away, yeah. then you know what? You got nothing to, to fear. Richard Drulier and Mary Chris Drulier, sister, brother-in-law of Maya Miliette, uh, who is uh, still missing.
They were asking for Larry's help, never helped at the search. Still with me, psychotherapist Dr. Robbie Ludwig, and joining us now in Alexandria, Virginia, body language expert, New York Times bestselling author of You Can't Lie to Me, Janine Driver is with us. You can check her out on TikTok at Body Language Institute. Great to see you. Okay, I want to play for both of you uh, Larry Miliette's interview with KGTV. We're going to play a chunk of it here, then I'm going to get your reaction. Uh, tell us what you hear, uh, maybe between the lines or maybe directly from his words. Let's listen. When did you first notice that May was missing? Last uh, Saturday morning. Okay. And tell uh, me. Her parents came by. Mm -hmm. Just tell me, kind of walk me through like the last time you saw her and what was going on. Uh, Thursday, Thursday night. Um, you know, like we got into a, a, a kind of an argument. Um, and, and, you know, we've been having, uh, you know, like problems, um, you know, for about a year. Kind of like been up and down and stuff like that. But after that, you know, I give her space. So just tell me, so you got into an argument and then um, the last time you saw her was actually in the house? Yes, okay. Thursday. So she yeah. did, she, and she didn't take a vehicle? No. No, no one but, saw her leave? Um, no, but on Friday, um, I could still hear her, but I didn't physically see her when I got home. But that's like normal too, because we, you know, we have lots of bedrooms, it's a two-story house, and, you know, we kind of like, well, I give her space. So, but that's why every time someone says um, Thursday, yes, it's physically, you know, or, you know, visually see her. But um, for me, it's uh, Friday, Friday night. You know, I can hear her, like, wrestling around, making dinner for herself in another bedroom. I'm sleeping with the kids in another bedroom. Okay. So upstairs and she's downstairs kind of deal, like, kind of like a roommate um, thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like giving each other space. Well, sure. I, I don't need the space. She always wants the space. Got it. So it was like Friday, and then you left or went went somewhere, and then came back, and she wasn't yeah. there, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I left her with my two girls because they, you know, they um uh, do their homes homeschool, mm -hmm. and then I just had my son with me. So uh, when I came back, she was still there on Friday. Um, we can hear her downstairs, you know, like after I'm done giving the kids baths and feeding them and everything, and. Um, on Saturday morning, uh, when her parents came came by, uh, her door was locked. Uh, I found the keys to the bedroom, and I opened it, and she was already gone. So it kind of maybe she went to a morning sunrise hike. All right, Janine Driver, your thoughts about what we just heard from Larry Miliette. This is at the point when his wife first went missing. And he went to the beach for 12 hours without a cell phone with his four-year-old son. Right, so let's start there. Uh, he says, you know, five times. Well, first of all, this is a verbal filler. And the interesting part is I listened to this interview with um, Channel 6. I didn't hear any you knows popping up. So here, right out of the gate, we're getting a lot of you knows. These are verbal stalls, right? The stalling technique, we don't know. Um, so it's verbal filling and the stalling technique. He saw, talks about Thursday in the house. And when, when he's asked again about the last time he saw Thursday in the house, his tone goes down, Vinny and, and Dr. Ro Robbie Ludwig and you at home. When our tone goes down, this is suspicious because it tends to be connected with sadness, but 85% plus over when people are deceptive, there's a sudden change in their tone and pitch of voice. So this suddenly going down when asked once again. And of course, he's talking about how he likes to give her space. Um, she, he doesn't need it, but that she needs it. He's just the superhero here. Um, later, he praises the police. You know, it's a year gone by. They didn't find him. And, and they're like, the, the reporter's like, well, the police kind of think you're a suspect. Aren't you mad about that? And he's like, listen, they're doing the best job they can. And, and that's this you know, overly polite to police. We saw something similar with Susan Smith when the helicopters were going above her head and her two kids were missing because she drowned them in the pond up the street. And she's like, the police are doing a great job because they're not finding her. One last thing I want to point out here before you turn it over to Robbie is, is that he also talks about, he says in a quote, not in this clip, but in another clip, he says, her family's trying to destroy me. And this is very interesting, Vinny. What we find is I believe her body has been literally destroyed. When we see people who murder someone, there's some type of violent crime, they'll often use the same words when talking about other people looking at them. So him saying later, my wife, Maya, uh, you know, his family, her family wants to destroy me, leads me to believe her body has been destroyed. Dr. Robbie, what did you hear from Larry Miliette there? 
Oh, it's really interesting. Well, you know, when I listened to him, it was very clear that the relationship was fractured, that this was not his choice, that his wife really did not really want that much to do with him. And it's very possible, if Janine is correct in her assessment, I have no reason to doubt that she is, that perhaps Larry was very paranoid. And sometimes when you're paranoid, you can create what you fear. Who knows how he interacted with his wife? And he could believe that he was the person who needed to right the wrong, that if his wife was wrong and wanted to leave him, it was his job to punish her. It was his job to set things correct. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, great to see you tonight. Um, thanks so much for helping us out. Janine Driver is going to stay Thank with you. us, and we're going to take a listen to a little bit more of Larry Miliette Plus coming up in the next hour. In Akron, Ohio, the phony funeral home trial, day one of the case against Shanti Harden, accused of running an unlicensed funeral home and abusing corpses. Tonight, we'll tell you exactly where he was storing the bodies. There's a wooden box. It's covered by a piece of cardboard. What's inside that box appears to be a body that's covered in plastic. If I That's Maya Miliette, uh, one of the videos that she posted on YouTube. She was a very talented singer, could play guitar, and obviously was a wonderful mother to her three children. She's been missing. Her husband's been charged with her murder. Um, still with me, uh, Janine Driver, a uh, body language expert. I want to uh, take a look at the arrest warrant uh, that was filled out here, the arrest warrant affidavit, to get some more information about what's going on in this relationship, Janine. And in it, um, it says that during the initial investigation, detectives learned that May and Larry had been having marital issues for the past year and that Larry discovered that May had an affair. Detectives learned that May and Larry had an argument the evening of January 7th. And then on January 8th, Larry left with his four-year-old for the day. Let's listen now to more of his interview with KGTV, our great affiliate out there. Asked him some questions. And it's interesting how he responds. Was there anybody that wanted to hurt her? Was there any other guy? I hate to ask, but, I, you know. Um, you know, like, I don't know. Uh, I told the police, you know, she really likes hiking. Okay. Um, you know, wine tasting, so Temecula and stuff like that. But I don't know what else to think, like, who would, you know, kidnap her. Or would she go hiking by herself? Um, she has, yes, but that's the one, like, close to the house. We have a hiking trail in San Miguel Park, or San Miguel right here. That's the only time she would go by herself. And yes, she has before in the beginning, um, but she would take her car. So right. she would go to the one, I don't know, the, the Santee one or the one in the Mesa. I, f I forgot there's a mountain there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yes, those ones she would go by. So, but most of the time she would go with hiking mamas, uh, with Shane. And then, um, you know, she's like one of the leaders and then everyone else is like, whoever shows up, shows up to that group. Janine Driver, the question was about, is there anyone that would want to hurt her? And did she have another man? And now he's talking about hiking. Right, this is a stalling technique. You know, I'm transported back in time, Vinny. You may remember this guy. Remember Drew Peterson, retired Illinois cop. They exhumed his third wife, Kathleen Savio, who died in a dry bathtub, right? His fourth wife uh, went missing, uh, Stacy Peterson. And this this affect, you know, it's so interesting when we're seeing these people who end up being arrested for murder. How about uh, get a divorce? Stop killing your wife. So this this very straight affect, he's, if you didn't speak the English language and you just heard these beats and this tone, that's having you would not think there's any crisis here so he's avoiding the question he's avoiding the question that's being asked who could have killed her quite quickly the correct answer is anyone could have killed her if she went out if she went hiking anyone ha could have killed her he could have even killed her anyone and for him to avoid the question 
uh, you know, be very cautious when we when we hear this. It's so funny because a friend of mine just busted me. She asked me a question and I turned and pivoted, you pivoted, just like uh, you'd see, hear a politician. And she goes, yeah, I'd like to go back to my original question. Are you really adopting a second puppy? Uh, are you adopting a second puppy? I'm like, yes, I am. So when you hear someone avoiding the question, this is suspicious, you know, earlier, and by the way, he also said this, Vinny, you know, we heard three of them right there. Earlier in the last statement with Dr. Robbie Ludwig that you played for us, he said, um, we kind of like, and he stopped. And then he said, I give her space. These are what are called start-stop sentences, Vinny, and they happen when someone's removing information. A start-stop sentence is like a scar. A scar on your skin means a piece of that skin has been removed, so there's a bump. When there's a start-stop sentence, it is someone giving you a bump in the story. Something has been removed, just like when you get a cut. So we definitely are hearing suspicious uh, information with his word choices, with the start-stop sentences, with a lot of these you knows. Truthful people convey, Vinny, liars try to convince. Often the people who are trying to convince us of their lies will suddenly start dropping in these you knows. Because it's like, obviously, you know, we all know this. It's not obvious to us. So these you knows are overly trying to convince us. Very suspicious here. I'm not surprised that he was arrested. And let's see what happens. I don't think if they do find uh, Maya's body, I, I I I would not be surprised if it was destroyed. So by the way, the neighbors heard on January 7th, Vinny, they heard what sounded like gunshots coming from that house. And then the very next day, he takes his four-year-old son to the beach without a cell phone. Um, very, very suspicious. And I'm glad you brought me in on this one. Yeah, let's. we've got more of Larry Miglietti. We're going to play one more um, of this interview with KGTV. Let's listen. Larry, Larry, just tell me, how, how worried are you and what do you think happened? Where do you think Before she is? I wasn't really worried. Um, you know, I was kind of like worried, but, you know, I wasn't like totally worried until the birthday. You know, I was thinking, okay, maybe, you know, like she's just blowing off steam, just like, you know, doing what she told me before where she wants everyone to leave her alone. Because before I used to get her family involved, like, hey, she's not coming home, you know, and then why'd you call my family? You know, I just want everyone to leave me there thing alone but you know i was like okay this time i think she stepped up her game you know like she's blocking everyone but now that you know she missed our daughter's birthday and like with all this pressure with the media and everything um there's something keeping her from contacting us so um my sister-in-law is you know i don't really try to think about that stuff because it's like mind numbing but i'm trying to stay positive but, you know, when people are telling me, hey, you know, maybe she got into an accident while she's hiking, you know, and she can't get a phone, like, well, her phone would be right next to her, you know what I mean? Like, she wears Fabletics, so it would be in her pocket. So, worst case scenario, I don't know what what's keeping her from, you know, contacting anyone, but this pressure should be enough pressure to say, hey, you guys, you know, I'm okay. Right. So, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to think, but, <laughs> you know, I'm still trying to... You know, keep my head up trying to say, hey, you know, keep positive and say, I'm hoping, you know, like, she'd just come home. You know, even though this, this whole situation is embarrassing. Janine Driver, 20 seconds for a final thought. I believe he does wish and hope that she would just come home because it'd make his life a whole lot easier. It's called Miller's Law. Miller's Law is we tell people what the truth is. It's actually in the words they use. I believe it. And he says... You know, I was kind of worried in the beginning. When there's a kind of, there's more to find of. Janine Driver, great to have you on. Appreciate your time, your insight. We'll see you again real soon. Love you, Vinny.